Recording in progress. Martha. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day. Nice cooler day after that hot, hot weather. It's good to see all, all of you and welcome to all of those worshiping online with us. I'm Rory Swenson. I've been enjoying uh, worshiping uh, with you. I get to fill in today as Pastor Rob continues with his sabbatical. But I'm going to be uh, picking up an interim position for a year up in Brainerd, so I'll, uh, I'll miss being with you. But uh, I've appreciated your hospitality and getting to know you, so I'll be back in a year. How's that? That sounds like a plan for me. So I'm thinking about uh, prayer as we worship today. What have you been praying about? Maybe you've been praying about uh, the recent Supreme Court decision. Maybe you're praying about um, all the pride festivals, praying that they're safe, celebrations around the nation. Maybe you've got something very personal going on in your life, and uh, part of worship is, is just being prayerful people. Well, I said I, I was listening to the music ahead of time. Uh, we're going to have a, 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 a powerful and prayerful worship experience, I trust. I've also been praying about a phrase, thoughts and prayers. Now, I, that's, that's an important phrase for me. Uh, you know, if you're going through something, I want to say to you, you're in my thoughts and prayers. And, and if you say that to me, I'm, I'm going to value that. I'm going to be touched by that. 
But I also know that it's been getting um, some bad press as we've had some, you know, a national uh, tragedy or something, uh, gun violence or a shooting. And, and, and we start saying, well, you know, thoughts and prayers are not enough. You know, we're, we're not just thoughts and prayers. We need, we need real change. I understand that as well. But for me, the thoughts and prayers are so important because that's, that's where the vision and the, the encouragement and the inspiration to keep going, to work for change. So those thoughts and prayers are what can sustain me and move us as, as a church. So I've got a vague sermon title something about prayer so we've got that theme of prayer uh, during our service today so announcements um, coffee and conversations um, from 9 to 10 tomorrow with Bob Shepard hosting and the session elders are hosting the summer monthly picnic first one is today is that, is that, is that correct we get a picnic today going on yeah. all right and so join uh, for that worship after after worship and then um, see and see after see. I love this title, Coffee and Conversations After Church. But if you sign up for bringing cookies, if we had cookies, we're up to four C's, right? So we could add another one. Coffee, conversation, cookies after church. All right. I tried. <laughs> well, any other announcements? Then I think we are ready for the call to worship. For your, for your um, home service. So, good morning. Let's join the call to worship. What is prayer? It is asking, asking and knocking, and not seeking, seeking and finding. Is it speaking or reading? Is it singing or listening? It is worship. Worship, serving, and giving. It is Jesus. It is breath and spirit. It is mystery. It is comfort and it is change. It is faith and hope. Perhaps, maybe, prayer is the love of God.
Please join me in the prayer of reconciliation. take a moment just to let the words of that music settle in. I invite you into a moment of silence as you hear again those words of God's peace, God's presence, God's love. Breathe in God's love. Again, breathe in God's love. In the name of Jesus Christ, the embodiment of God's love. God's peace be with you. Let's rise and greet one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. <laughs> Peace be with you.
Just the people that love you We seek our offerings Let we set before you God hear our prayers That we're lifting up to you God see your tears That we're struggling to see through God hear our prayers As we lift them to heaven We're praying the angels Receive and embrace them The hopes of the empty The cries of the broken We're reaching our hands out Oh Lord will you hold them God hear our prayers We lift them to you Prayer of Illumination. Holy Spirit, giving life to all life, moving all creatures, root of all things, washing them clean, wiping out their mistakes, healing their wounds. You are our true life, luminous, wonderful, awakening the heart from its ancient sleep. Our scripture today, we start off with Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. God said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting the mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was also not in the earthquake. Twelve and after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? From Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that the Spirit intercedes with groanings too deep for words. And lastly, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. In the morning, while it is still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. These are the words of the Lord. Sometimes I like, sometimes my fingers like that things to do. Yeah. 
ever paint like that. So that I can train my fingers. In. So there's different kinds of bees. <laughs> Some people like candles for prayers. Now oh, let's see. I have some friends who 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 use a, something called a prayer wheel. I have some friends who, who use a prayer wheel. We can learn about that someday. Um let's see. Oh, a cross. i sometimes it's nice to just kind of hold a cross. And well, it helps me think about church and God's love. A cross. What else have I got? Oh! Bible. Did you know the Bible has prayers in it? Lots of prayers are in the Bible. And some of the, there's a book called the Psalms full of prayers. So the Bible helps me pray. And I've got books about prayer. Lots of people, there's prayers I can read and say. So I have prayer books. And I've got one of the song books here. Hey, when we, did you know when you're saying you're praying? Did you know that? When you're saying you're, I bet you know when you're saying, when you sing you're praying. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's for listening to music. Sometimes I just listen to music and that helps me pray. Oh, let's see, we've got things up here that remind us of baptism and communion. I think those are those are kinds of prayers too you can be learning about. Oh, I have some friends who use sage. To help them with prayers. You can someday learn about that maybe. Oh, I have some friends who pray with some special shawls. And um, I try to be real respectful about those things. Those are their important things for prayer. But I like to learn about them. And a few more. I have, some, I have a Bible friend who has lots of these. They're, they're called icons. And they're, they're Jesus doesn't really look like that. But they kind of help think about looking at Jesus and they have different meanings and they're called icons. And they just kind of sit by and look at the icons. So that's a way to pray. And then I use the bowl. You know what these kind of bowls would say? You heard several verses about prayer. 
In one of them, the reading from Romans, it, it's Paul saying, we do not know how to pray. Imagine Paul himself saying, we don't know how to pray. I'm guessing he's including himself in that. I, I'm going to say amen to what Paul says there. I, I don't know how to pray. But then he says, the Spirit intercedes, helps us with sighs or groans, different translations, too deep, too deep for words. I, I like that. But then I started to wonder, well, how do, I, how do I pray in a way that I'm letting the Spirit help me? How do I follow this, this, this spirit in ways that are even, how do I pray in ways too deep for words? Actually, I think I got that one. Too deep for words. But I've got questions about prayer. So let's, let's pause and pray. Gracious God, once again, work through us, in us, above us, beyond us, trusting that you can Speak through every person here. Help us to be those listeners open to your spirit. In Christ we pray. Amen. So I don't even know where to start on this. Um, as I said, I left the sermon title wide open. Something about prayer. I was thinking about prayer as mystery. And maybe that should have been uh, the sermon title. Prayer as mystery. I mean, what is prayer? So first of all, I'm kind of thinking of that old parable about uh, the six blind men who are trying to describe an elephant. You probably know this. It's been around a while. Each one of them gets a small part of the elephant. One person has the tusk, and he says, oh, an elephant is like a spear. Another one is touching the big flat ear. Oh, no, an elephant is more like a fan or a... It's a leaf. Elephant's like a huge leaf. Another one has the, the, the trunk and, of the elephant. Says, oh, no, elephant is, is like a snake. And another one's got arms wrapped around the legs of the elephant. And, oh, it's like a tree. It's like a tree trunk. And on it goes. You know, one has a tail. It's like a rope. I think we all have some experience of prayer. Our own experience. And, and it probably doesn't do a lot of good to compare yourself to others. Maybe you've got your own favorite book or writer or experience, a tradition, a way of prayer that fits who you are. I remember years ago, a clergy colleague said, you know, when I pray, I got to go swimming. That was her way, morning time in the pool. She was just a, a, an active person, you know. So we end up saying, well, you know, prayer, uh, it's like this or it's like that. We've all got a piece of this huge reality or conversation, this part of life. So what is prayer? I don't know you, but when I got a question, I look it up on the Internet. So I looked up uh, prayer on the Internet. Um, I do that for everything else. So I Googled it, and guess what? I got a few replies. Um, over 200 million links or sites for prayer that I could click on. And then I used another uh, browser and uh, search engine, and, and I got 317 million. I, I can't imagine. I didn't look them all up. <laughs> but you got to wonder, what is out there? And why so many? I mean, surveys will tell us that most people claim to pray in some way or, or another, and I think most Religious tradition, many cultures have some type of prayer, meditation, something. What is prayer? I think I know what prayer is. I mean, I pray. That's what prayer is. I, it's, I pray. I've been on prayer retreats, taught some classes on prayer. I grew up with it. I was fortunate to grow up in some church traditions. And, and even in family practices, I learned some table prayers. I learned some bedtime prayers, church prayers, the Lord's Prayer. Steve Braden's going to give us a, a, a series on the Lord's Prayer coming up. I got that right? Yeah. 
Remember, the disciples went to Jesus and they asked him, teach us how to pray. I wonder what they saw in him that they wanted as they would see him praying. Maybe they wanted to pray like Jesus prayed. And, and I can, maybe it's a model for me. I want to say, Jesus, teach me how to pray. I want to pray in, in, in your spirit, in your name. So who taught you to pray? That'd be a fun uh, turn and talk with each other, a little small group discussion. If, you, if we could do that, just take them. We won't do it, but if you could take it. When, when did you first learn some prayers or anything about prayer? Or maybe it was a time in your life when you, uh, something was going on in your life and whatever it was, you were, you were praying. There was something deep going on. I was taught that I could talk to God. Tell God what I was worried about, and I still do that. But, I, but at the same time, I, I don't know what prayer is. I just do it. And I want to learn more about prayer. So at one time, I had over 100 books about prayer. Really, I'm not kidding. I had over 100 books with prayers or about prayer in some way. But when I retired, I fortunately downsized. And I don't have near that many. But I still have some. And I have this one. Very prominent in a pastor's library, the complete idiot's guide to prayer. <laughs> I love the marketing on this. Quick and easy ways to integrate prayer into your daily life. Idiot proof steps to learning prayers for every occasion. <laughs> Down to earth advice on using prayer to help overcome setbacks and disappointments. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I would sign up for this. Down-to-earth advice. A lot of guarantees in here. Got even more on the back cover. It really likes to push the quick and easy part. Become patient, honest, sincere, and humble with your prayer. Anybody want that one? Reaffirm your faith. Comfortable place for prayer. It's got some... It, actually, it's not a bad book. It's got some good stuff. Use prayer to manage physical, emotional, spiritual pain. Talks about using symbols. I think I collected books about prayer because I was looking for help. I, I think uh, maybe I'm kind of like an art collector. That if I think I can collect enough art, then I'm an artist, right? Or a better artist. Except... How do I know? How do you know if you're getting better at prayer? I'll, I don't know. Steve can tell you some story about getting a B sometime, but I'll save that for his material sometime. <laughs> He's got a good story. Make sure you get it. It helps me to read about prayer and look at what people over the generations, their history have. What, I mean, I want to learn from others. Let me ask you this. Do you ever get to talk about prayer? Do you feel good about your prayer life? Do you think that you pray enough? And, and what if you think that you're a failure at prayer? You don't know how to pray. Don't feel like praying. I can tell you all that's normal. How many questions do you have about prayer? Can I pray about anything, even if it's as simple like I can't find my cell phone? Or I'm scared about this conversation coming up. Or, or something at work or school. And I just need help. Sometimes I just got to have a little help to start the day. And so on. Is that too small? Can I pray like that? I, I think sometimes my, my prayer life doesn't always match my theology. But that's, that's a different sermon. Can I bother the God of the whole universe... I mean, I pray about some pretty small stuff in the big scheme of it all. Don't you? I mean, anybody going to confess to that one? How about quantity? This is an interesting one. People are always doing prayer chains. I get prayer requests by email. You can go on Facebook, and you can get a 1,000 people to pray about something. Does that make it a stronger prayer? I don't know. Is there any scientific evidence for prayer? That has been studied a lot. We really don't understand how the universe works. 
Are we all, a, I mean, we're, we're kind of all a bunch of energy, aren't we? Send me some good vibrations, positive vibes. That could make sense if we're all energy. Is that prayer? Is that what's going on? Is prayer natural to us? Or is it something we have to learn? And if so, how? How can I learn how to pray? Again, who taught you? Lessons, models, examples. Are there any rules? Are there rules to prayer? Silence. Music. Meditation. Art. My daughter loves to bake. She says it helps her just center. I enjoy her baking. Intercessory prayer. Confession. Thanksgiving. Rituals. Working, talking, listening, just being. Somebody always will bring up, well, well, how about biblical prayer? Okay? You can find about 650 prayers in the Bible. Abraham and Moses and, I mean, they're making deals with God. Bargaining and begging. Okay, I prayed like that. I guess it was biblical. We got Elijah listening to a still, small voice. Actually, we don't really know how to translate the, the Hebrew in that. Um, a sheer silence, a whisper. I remember, he's gone off and he's kind of in solitude and retreat, and he's going through a tough time. And then, out of that silence, he hears a voice that asks him, "What are you doing here?" I think sometimes in prayer, I think God is asking me, what, what, what are you doing here? And then I have to spend some time with that question. We've got the Psalms, every emotion possible, praying the Psalms, rich tradition. St. Paul tells us to pray about everything. He mentioned praying without ceasing in another scripture. Is, is that a kind of mindfulness, to pray without ceasing? I, I think it could be. Again, as we heard, Paul says, we do not know how to pray as we ought. Sighs. <sighs> Too deep for words. The spirit groaning and praying within us. I like the sound of that. Like I said, can I just let God feel my feelings? I think so. I don't have to explain it. I can just let God feel my feelings. And if I follow the psalm, sometimes I can put voice to it. I can pray, I can, I can yell. I remember early on in my ministry, I had a, a church member who'd lost uh, his second son in a tragic accident, and, and uh, he hadn't been on good terms with God for quite a while, and, and uh, young right out of seminary, what, what have I got to offer for advice, except I could say to him, well, next time you're smoking your cigar, just go on a out for a walk in the evening and just yell it out with God. I, I, maybe that's the prayer he needed. Some people talk about praying in tongues as a freeing prayer experience. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know. Jesus had a lot of lessons and parables about prayer. He said, uh, don't heap up empty phrases. Don't make a show of it. I hope I'm not making a show of it. I, I, I served uh, some churches in rural Kentucky, a little country church, Beach Creek Church, and it had some very old traditional ways that I thoroughly enjoyed experiencing. But, but in the worship service there, I was told, no, we don't do the Lord's Prayer. I've always said the Lord's Prayer is part of a Sunday. But they said, no, no, we, because we start just kind of repeating it, and pretty soon it turns into empty phrases, and the Bible says, don't be... Don't be using empty phrases. So the Lord's Prayer was kept for special occasions. It's kind of like saving the good china, but never really getting around to using it, I think. We know that Jesus prayed. He prayed a lot. He prayed when he was facing uh, decisions, hard times. While it was dark, he went off to pray by himself. and He prayed for other people. He prayed for 
for people in distress. He prayed for people when they were being tempted. He prayed for people who were left out. And he, he just prayed. Over the years, I've done a whole sermon series on prayer. I noticed a pattern in almost all of the books that I read on prayer. And they started out mostly with the same questions that I had, the same mixed feelings, feelings of inadequacy. So I felt like I was in good company. So I want to listen. I want you to listen to the pattern here with some people that I appreciate and admire. Philip Yancey is a he's a, he's a popular evangelical author, um, but I think he's done an exceptionally good job with this book on prayer. I like his honesty. He says, "I write about prayer as a pilgrim." not an expert. I have the same questions that occur to almost everyone at some point. Is God listening? Why should God care about me? If God knows everything, what's the point of prayer? Why do answers to prayer seem so inconsistent, even capricious? Why does God sometimes seem close and sometimes far away? Does prayer change God or change me? He says, before beginning this book, I mostly avoided the topic of prayer out of guilt and a sense of inferiority. I'm embarrassed to admit that I do not keep a journal, I do not see a spiritual director, and do not belong to a regular prayer group. In short, my main qualification for writing about prayer is that I feel unqualified and genuinely want to learn. More than anything else in life, I want to know God. I've come to see prayer as a privilege, not a duty. Like all good things, prayer requires some discipline. Yet I believe that life with God should seem more like friendship than duty. He goes on to say, prayer includes excuse me, moments of ecstasy and also dullness. Mindless distraction and acute concentration. Flashes of joy and bouts of irritation. In other words, prayer has features in common with all relationships that matter. Here's something from um, another favorite book and author of mine. I'd, uh, if I was plugging books, I'd plug this one most of all for today. Barbara Brown Taylor, An Altar in the World. I've given away many copies of this book. Nodding your head over there. She, she writes, I have shelves full of prayer books and books on prayer. I have file drawers full of notes from courses I have taught and taken on prayer. I have meditation benches I have used twice. Prayer mantras I have intoned for as long as a week. Notebooks with column after column of the names of people in need of prayer. Is writing them down enough? I have invested, she says, I have invested a small fortune in icons, candles, monastic incense, and incense burners. And then she writes, I'm a failure at prayer. When people ask me about my prayer life, my mind starts scrambling for ways to hide my problem. I start talking about other things that I do that I hope will make me sound like a godly person. I try to say admiring things about prayer so there can be no doubt about how important I think it is. I ask the other person to tell me about her prayer life, hoping she will notice that I have changed the subject. Again, from an altar in the world. Picking up a pattern yet? You're nodding your head, going, okay, I can relate. Well, how about Anne Lamont? Very popular author, very earthy way of uh, talking about things. But uh, this was a bestseller, uh, Help, Thanks, Wow, subtitled Three Essential Prayers. This book sold a lot. Why? Because I think we are culturally hungry for something about prayer. And she starts out with these words, I do not know much about God and prayer. But I have come to believe over the past 25 years that there is something to be said about keeping prayer simple. Help. Thanks. Wow. She goes on to say, you may 
in fact, be wondering what I even mean when I use the word prayer. She says, it's certainly not what TV Christians mean. It's not for display purposes like plastic sushi or neon. Prayer is private, even when we pray with others. It is communication from the heart to that which surpasses understanding. Let's say it is communication from one's heart to God, end quote. And then just one more quote from Joyce Rupp, a rich uh, Catholic writer, with lots of good material. This is a simple book, simply called Prayer. She says, prayer is ethereal, baffling, uncertain, and impossible to explain. On the other hand, methods of prayer are specific, practical, definable, understandable, and evident. Prayer can mean many things to many people. The framework is either personal alone or communal, joining with others. She says, in Christian prayer, we pray any time we deliberately choose to relate to God. So what is prayer in your life? If I could give you a lingering question, what is prayer in your life? I think it is especially important for us to just, uh, again, just revisit prayer in our life and in the way our nation is and the things going on in the news, pray for the world, times ahead. One of the quotes on the cover of that idiot's guide to prayer says, welcome to the great adventure of prayer, to the pilgrimage of the heart. I like that. The pilgrimage of the heart might be a little wandering as well. But let me leave you with some homework. As I said, think about what you consider to be prayer in your life. Okay? What? Where? When? How? I believe you are already praying in some way. I really believe that. You already have prayer going on in your life. Sometimes we don't recognize to call it that. Maybe it's working in the garden. Could be that pet in your lap. Listen to those times when you're feeling some deep emotion. What's going on there? Or feeling peace. Or you find yourself just catching your breath. Spiritually speaking, catching your breath. Pay attention to when and how that happens in your life. Those are clues for your prayer life. Follow them up. And then I want to clearly say this from Thomas Merton, famous Catholic monk, writes another rich level of wisdom. He said this about prayer. We do not want to be beginners. But let us be convinced of the fact that we will never be anything else but beginners all our life. I want to say trust what you have for now. Pray in whatever way you can. And when you're ready to explore and try something new, see where it goes. Keep going in this pilgrimage of the heart. I believe there's something about prayer. Something that is just about God and beauty and life. Thanks be to God. As we share these gifts, may this offering become sounds of prayer, spoken and unspoken. May it become the sound of peace for a world that has almost forgotten how to listen. May it become the sound of prayer in assurance and hope. May these gifts be the sounds of your love in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Children.
prayer. Please be seated. <laughs> I don't know if we have any uh, written prayer requests to share at this time. I don't know how to do the technology to get on with the Facebook piece. Uh, so those of you uh, at home, uh, we're going to trust the mystery of prayer that what is on your hearts is going to be shared uh, as well. Just... Yes. Yes. Okay, praying for your uncle. All right, praying for 
God's presence and healing and guidance from medical team around. Yeah. 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 Others? Pray for the person to your right or to your left or in front of you or behind you for a moment. Praying for the people right here, praying for every person online in this mystery of prayer that transcends and knows no limits across time and space. Prayers for healing. Prayers for guidance. Prayers of encouragement. Prayers for courage. Prayers for peace. Continue lifting up Ukraine. But many other places in the world with violence and refugees and threat of hunger and starvation. We pray for wisdom and vision to make the responses. Praying for justice. Praying for women's health in all its fullness. This is the conversation of the nation. Praying for all the, the pride gatherings going on. Again, praying for celebration and affirmation and, and safety. Prayer spoken and unspoken. All in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When you sing God of the Sparrow and God of the Whale, it's one of, one of my favorites simply because it seems to ask those questions of how do we speak in the midst of all this wonder of life and uh, situations. So, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale, as we sing.
Here to pray the name of Jesus. And know that it is saying home in all of its deepest visions of belonging. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and that continue fellowship, stirring, gathering of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.